What's crack? Big dog. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the headquarters. My name is Nicholas. This is Speedy G. Big dog guy. This is our likely our final waiver wire video of the year. Suck it in. All right. Prepare yourselves. This is going to be a good one. It's not. It's going to be just like every other one. But it's the last one. So we have to pretend like it's a big deal. It is a big deal. Because if you're watching this, you're probably in the chip. You're probably playing for some hardware or some money. I'm here to make you lose. Now, we've got some running backs. We've got some wide receivers. We've even got a spicy quarterback. News just broke. So did his finger. It's Jimmy G. And we're going to get into the quarterbacks. We're going to get into the running backs. We're getting into everybody that you need to be picking up in week 17 of fantasy football after we tuck our shirts in. Stop yelling. I apologize if at any point I get extremely distracted by just how horribly bad Ian Book is at football. So I'm watching Monday Night Football game right now. It's the end of the first quarter, so if anything happens in the final three quarters, I apologize. We can't cover it. I'm not a fucking robot, all right? But Ian Book might actually be a robot. Here's what we're doing. I'm going over my waiver wire article on the website, bdge.store. We have an exclusive fab guidance, all that kind of shit, where we have a chart and we rank every player on the waiver wire by position, by overall rank, how much money we drop on them, and whether or not we spend the number one waiver priority. But it's the last week of the season. So they say, go big, or go really fucking big. We're going big and we're dropping the big facts today. And the number one overall waiver wire pickup for the week is none other than Mr. Darrell Williams, okay? Now, Darrell Williams will be taking over CEH, who has not actually been ruled out yet. Uh, he had a collarbone injury, which is actually a shoulder injury, and he has not been ruled out of Week 17 yet. They play Cincinnati. They are at Cincinnati, who have been good against running backs, fantasy running backs in particular, because that's what we're here to talk about today. I'm sorry. I'm turning the TV off. Don't get my focus and attention. This is a very important waiver wire, all right? So I need to act like it. I need to act accordingly. Darrell Williams will take over as a lead back if Clyde edwards Lair misses, which I believe he will. I think the question more so is whether or not the Chiefs will get him back in the regular season for Week 18, more so than Week 17. The x-rays did come back negative, but the problem was Darrell Williams was already eating into Clyde's workload. Darrell was seeing 46% of the team's snaps prior to this injury. And in the five games prior, or in the five games this year without CEH, Darrell Williams has averaged 18 PPR fantasy points per game, five and a half targets per game, 94 yards from scrimmage per game and 0.6 touchdowns just under 19 touches per game actually at 19 touches per game so monster monster workload in a backfield that we once again want part of okay it's the Chiefs they're back to form for the most part a lot of it run by their defense but it's starting to pour over into their offense whereas for a long time it was the opposite but we want Darrell Williams we want him bad we also want Trey Lance bad especially if you're in a super flex league and you are in need of a quarterback which Everybody really fucking is. No one has two good quarterbacks in super flex leagues. If you do, fuck you. Trey Lance, going to be starting this week. Not official, but it's official. All right, Jimmy G's going to be out. Did something to his hand, his finger. We don't give a fuck, right? Trey Lance is going to be in the game. That's all we care about. Fantastic, fantastic running quarterback. And they get to play the not fantastic Houston Texans. I will, I will say this most likely means that whoever is the starting running back, Jeff Wilson, Elijah Mitchell's back. They get a boost up in the rankings because I think we've seen Shanahan wants to run the ball, wants to use the running backs at a heavy clip if Trey Lance is going to be under center. He does not quite trust him yet to throw the ball. Regardless, Trey Lance is going to eat. He's going to eat a lot. He's going to be full. He's going to have seconds. And he might even have thirds. And he's going to have desserts. He's going to throw up the dessert and then get back on the Uber Eats app. That's what I imagine is going to happen against Houston Texans. So Trey Lance, someone that you need to get on immediately if you need a quarterback. In your super flex league or one quarterback league. I'm not sure where I'm going to have them ranked yet. I didn't do my rankings. I don't think we have a Thursday night football game this week, so the rankings probably won't go up until Friday or Saturday because I might as well just get all the information and all the COVID shits happen before I use all my time and energy on that shit. All right, so rankings will also go up on the website, bge.store. It's where you can join the membership, et cetera, et cetera. But Miles Sanders will not be joining the playing in week 17 club, all right, because he's already been ruled out with the fractured hand which means either Jordan Howard or Boston Scott will be the lead back here. It'll probably be a committee if Howard's playing. If he's not playing, Boston Scott's going to see a big workload against Washington. This was a Washington defense two weeks ago. Miles Sanders absolutely tore up. Jordan Howard is also dealing with a stinger. Whatever that means, probably already seen it on Twitter. 
or heard in my live stream earlier yesterday, which you can go watch on the channel. I recapped every game in week 16. Jordan Howard's dealing with a stinger, which doesn't seem serious, but it either subsides immediately or it ling it can linger for a long time, okay? And he had a stinger a couple of years ago and it ended up costing him six games. So he is definitely in no way, shape or form a guarantee to play in week 17. Boston Scott will play in week 17, okay? So both of them need to be added. I would likely, man, I don't really know. I would, I would probably put the same amount of fab on both of them and just hope I get one of the two. If Jordan Howard's plays, I'm not confident in starting Boston Scott, I would start Howard over Boston Scott. So I guess I'm prioritizing Howard over Scott. If Howard doesn't play, then you're definitely starting Boston Scott and it's like a rock solid flex play. I was thinking you could probably start Dare Umbuwale for Jacksonville because RIP to James Robinson, the saddest story ever told. I will probably pump the brakes a little bit on Dare because they play against New England. They're at New England. Uh, the game script is not going to be good. They're 16 point or 15 and a half point underdogs. So that could mean he's going to catch a lot of passes because he is a good pass catching back. He was like a pass catching specialist during his years in Tampa Bay. I'm not like sold that he's going to give you anything more than 15 empty touches. You know, five of them might be pass catches. Five of them might give you some PPR points, but I'm not, I don't think he's going to get into the end zone against New England. I don't think he's going to be a guy that rips off 100 yards of scrimmage or anything like that. So on the list, because James Robinson is out, Carlos Hyde is on the IR, he's likely going to be the starting running back in an offense that just doesn't score fucking touchdowns. Tra Trevor Lawrence, I don't think he scored a touchdown since Halloween. I'm not, that's not even hyperbole. I literally don't think he scored, I think he scored one touchdown over the last eight weeks, which is fucking concerning. Kadarius Tony concerning on many levels, but might not be for your lineups next week. Okay, so Kadarius Tony, KJ Osborne, Alan Lazard, Josh Palmer, and Isaiah McKenzie are the wide receivers I'm looking at on the waiver this week, all right? Darius Tony led the team, first first game back in like five weeks, went out, led the team in targets, receptions, receiving yards. We need Daniel Jones back, all right? They play Chicago next week, so it's definitely a matchup you could succeed through the air. Daniel Jones not back, I'm not starting Darius Tony. He moves down the list for this. I have no idea if Daniel Jones is gonna play. I don't think anyone does at this point. It's probably less than 50% that he does, but if he does play, I'm, I kinda like Tony as being the number one here. We saw him in week 11 get 12 targets. And we've seen him have really, really big games. So someone to keep an eye on. KJ Osborne, obviously, without him feeling out, KJ Osborne has been able to score fucking every single week. Three touchdowns in the last four games. Al Lazar has been scoring left and right. He's been the wide receiver, too, behind Devontae Adams. They're going against Minnesota, a team that you could definitely beat through the air. Josh Palmer looking crispy with Mike Williams already ruled out for Week 17 because he's unvaccinated. We also have Jalen Guyton on the COVID list. They play against Denver. Josh Palmer, uh, a few good games in a row now. And he's a pretty talented third-round rookie. Uh, six targets, five catches, 43 yards, and a touchdown in his previous week. So he is a nice possession receiver. That doesn't make the plays downfield that Mike Williams does, but he can be a good, solid weapon for Mr. Herbert. Okay, so I really like Josh Palmer as well. And Isaiah McKenzie had the blow-up game in Buffalo this previous weekend. I think it was 12 targets, 11 catches, went over 100 yards, touchdown. Play against Atlanta, so another beautiful, juicy matchup. He was the slot receiver. Cole Beasley, Gabriel Davis both missed this game. If they're both back, then there's no way you're starting Isaiah McKenzie. If one of them's back, then I probably don't have any confidence starting Isaiah McKenzie either. I think they would both need to miss this game in order for me to want to start a guy like Isaiah McKenzie again. And I know the name everybody's been waiting to hear because they don't know anything about him. It's Rex Burkhead. Guys, we know fucking exactly who Rex Burkhead is, and it's not what he just did to the Chargers. He's not a 22 for 150 and two touchdown guy on the ground. The last six games prior to that, he was like five fantasy points, four fantasy points, two fantasy points, eight fantasy points, playing the same amount of snaps that he did on Sunday. He did not get a, a boost up in play time. He just got more carries because somehow they were playing in garbage time against the Chargers. They got up. Not going to happen on Sunday against San Francisco. San Francisco is, I believe, 14-point favorites. In this. I know the Chargers were as well, but like, that shit, you know, you're not catching lightning in a bottle twice. Ain't happening, all right? You ain't, you ain't catching Rex Burkhead in a bottle. He's pretty small. You can probably catch him in a bottle twice. Yeah, so Rex Burkhead, a little bit further down the list. I would probably grab all the running backs I just named over him. Although David Johnson, I think, was, like, put back on the COVID list again. I don't know what's going on with him. I think they're just, like, we want you to retire. So just, like, get on every possible IR list that we can find a, a hole for you to fit into. So, like, Rex Burkhead, whatever, I'm not going to be suggesting – you play him in your lineups next week. He'll probably be like the RB28 or like 30 or something like that. So I guess he's not unplayable, but I don't love him. I like Gerald Deverett. He's put together a bunch of good games in a row. They're playing against Detroit, who have actually been a tougher defense and probably given credit for just a better team all around. Gerald Deverett strung together a few good games, super athletic. He keeps finding the end zone while DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett are fucking, I don't know what they're doing, playing patty cake on the sideline while Russell Wilson is fucking 
talking to the crowd or something. None of them are in the game at this point. But Gerald Everett is in the game, right? That's all I got to say. Uh, Gerald Everett, Derek Orr, Keyshawn Vaughn, Cole Komet. Those guys aren't in it. Whatever. Uh, streaming defenses. Let's look at defenses here. There are a bunch of good options, actually, that I really like that are less than 55% rostered on Sleeper. Again, all this information, this entire chart, all the in-depth stuff is available. BDG.store forward slash community. My topic of this week would be the 49ers defense. They are minus 15 against the Texans. All right, they're 15-point favorites against the Texans. They are playing at home, 52% owned on Sleeper. The Eagles are my second favorite team. They are playing on the road in Washington. They're only three-and-a-half-point favorites, but I like Philadelphia as a team. I like their defense. They're 46% owned, and the Washington offense is abysmal. Taylor Heineke continues to be exposed. The New Orleans Saints take on Carolina next week. They are seven-point favorites. They are at home. The over-under is 38 points. They will have one of their quarterbacks back, most likely. 41% rostered. I like the Cleveland Browns as well. They are on the road against Pittsburgh. They're only minus three, so the three-point favorites on the road, which tells you in a neutral stadium they'd be minus six. At home, they would actually be – that's pretty crazy. At home, they'd be minus nine. 39% owned. Cleveland Browns will be getting I, – what, what I like to look for in streaming defenses is really, really – big mismatches in the trenches. The Browns will be getting back almost all of their defensive players, and the Pittsburgh offensive line is so, so horrid. During Halloween, we didn't have to go to the movie theaters. All you had to do was turn on the fucking Steelers game. It was a fucking horror movie. It's a bloodbath out there, all right? And Cleveland will be trotting out their best defenders, and when they are full strength, they are a very good defense. So I think there's going to be a massive mismatch here between Cleveland and Pittsburgh, and if Big Ben don't get it done quickly, it's the end of the season. They might just bench him for like the second half of the game. It's not going to be good for Pittsburgh. And then the fifth, I guess, Seattle is worth mentioning. They're seven and a half point favorites against Detroit. We'll have to see what Jared Goff does. He was reactivated from the COVID list, so he's probably going to end up playing. Seahawks, seven and a half point favorites, 15% owned. I, I don't like playing defenses that aren't actually good defenses in real life, which is why I probably shy away from Seattle and put them as the fifth favorite defense uh, on this list. So we have 49ers, Eagles, Saints, Browns, Seahawks. Both of my guys. All right, y'all. One last time, thank you for joining me for the Waiver Wire film. I love you very much. Hit the thumbs up if you love me too. Subscribe to the channel if you want to love me in the future. Email me if you want to make love. All right. Okay.